Witcher 3 modding stage is absolutely breathtaking and allows you to fix, improve and expand the game in many directions, turning one of the best RPGs of all times into an unrivaled masterpiece even 6 years later, tailored to your preference. But modding it, especially for a newcomer, may become a nuisance due to compatibility issues between the mods and lack of properly explained information about how to deal with this. After watching this video, you will start to understand the Witcher 3 mod conflicts and moreover, learn how to solve them easily with the help of clear examples. Let's go! First of all, you will need a great tool called a script merger. It allows you both see and solve the conflicts. Its installation is as simple as to download and unzip the tool folder, then launch it and specify the game pass. No actual installation is needed, as it is a portable tool. In 99% of cases, there are conflicts either between so-called bundled non-text or just models and textures basically, or scripts and bundled text .ws and .xml files, which both have certain part of code and the parameters in them. It may look scary at first, but just a few minutes after you will realize there is nothing to fear at all. Models and Textures conflicts aka overwriting order first. Models and textures can exist in two forms, either in forms of the loose files, where you actually see each model or texture file, or in the form of them being packed into special archives, differing from game to game. For Elder Scrolls and Fallout series, for example, these are .bsa archives, and for Witcher it is so-called bundles. Loose files are much better to operate with, as you see them all and can for example tell the game I want mod A being fully overwritten by mod C, but only these certain files from mod A to overwrite mod B, etc. In this way you can mix and match graphics mods content to achieve best visual results. When it comes to archives, as loose file system is sadly not available for Witcher, you cannot do this and can only specify load order of these mods according to which they will override each other completely. And this is how it's done for Witcher 3. You can also achieve the great result by adjusting the load order rules aka priority properly. For Witcher 3, the numerically lower priority number has higher load order over a mod with numerically bigger priority number, meaning that from 1 to 100, priority 1 is highest and priority 100 is lowest. The example of several mods with different priorities and what this results into is being shown on the screen now. You can set up priority either in a script merger itself or in mod settings configuration file, usually located at Documents The Witcher 3 folder. It is a really simple system and only thing it requires is your time. If you have a lot of mods, you will also spend plenty of time figuring out the best combinations for the load order for the best visual results. And here where is the Witcher 3 Ultimate Modding Guide helping you? You can download the named mod settings configuration file, which has literally each and every needed mod from the guide priority already set up in it, with the best visual result in mind. So no matter which or how many graphics mods from the guide you will use, this load order will automatically sort the mods for you. Thus, this part of tutorial is mostly for your general understanding. Now let's go to somewhat harder part. The script and XML files conflicts are usually happening when you're using plenty of gameplay mods, which may modify same aspects of the game and so same files. This happens from time to time for graphics mods too, but still mostly for gameplay mods. The script merger shows you where there are the script.ws or bundle text .xml conflicts and offers you to merge them, always do so. By the way, there is a somewhat old myth that uh, XML files should not be merged. This is completely untrue. The scene is, yes, of course, technically, you cannot merge the XML files. The load order priority will take one mod XML file over another mod XML file. But in this way, as you may have already guessed probably, changes or the new features from that mod will be completely non-existing in your game. This can be loot, uh, traders arsenal, or changes and new effects to weapons, armors and skills, etc. 
So once again, always do merge XML files too. The principle of merging both scripts and XMLs is the same, so I will demonstrate this on a scripts example. Also as for the scripts, it's absolutely mandatory to merge them too, because while your game will still work with unmerged XML conflicts, with unmerged scripts conflicts, it will simply crash on launch. What the script merger is doing is basically it compares the code in conflicting files line by line and merges the changes together and then compiles everything into a new mod which will have combined lines of code from both mods. There can be two results of the merges. Either merge is done automatically, meaning program did all the work for you, or it can ask you to manually merge some conflicts. But don't worry, you do not have to be a programmer yourself to do so. Now let's see why it sometimes cannot merge automatically. The code in both mods, imagine it as a simply a certain amount of text lines. Green one, mod number one, and the orange one, mod number two. If the both mods changes are simple, for example, they just edit vanilla lines of code and simply change some values, etc., then when merged, it will look something like this, a simple splicing. And that's what an automatic merge looks like. But no automated tool is perfect and mods may change lines of code more drastically, at own or remove existing ones. In this case, when program splices both together, it can look something like this. So the program becomes confused due to various inconsistencies. It simply doesn't know what to do and asks you for help. In the top part of the script merger, you will see three windows, with the code lines in the merger windows. From left to right, first is the part of vanilla code, and next to are conflicting mods. In the window below, you will see the output code. That's where you are forwarding your merged lines, allowing changes from both mods to work together. If there are multiple conflicts, you can cycle between them using Ctrl and Page Up or respectively Ctrl and Page Down K combinations. To solve the conflicts, you need to navigate to it in lower window, right click and choose from which mod you want to paste the line of code. It can be one or both. There also can be two types of manual merging, simple and complex ones, if you can say so. In a simple case, like shown here, it is really straightforward. You see in one mod file this line is empty and in another mod file there is a new line of code. So you logically choose select lines from C, as it is the third mod in a row here, then click save and close the window. Bam, it's done. But there can be more complex cases too. This example is a conflict between my existing mod setup and the mod called of viable swords and dumplings, both modifying a script called playerwitcher.ws. As you can see, there are two conflicts and two very different additions in the same part of code, which means you need them both. For both existing mod and a newly added one have their features present in the game. Ok, so now what's the first thought coming to mind? Right, choose both lines from B and C in each conflict. But here is the problem. Should you do so and save the file, game will simply crash on launch with some weird error message. As mentioned already, no automated tool is perfect, and that's an example of it. Now let's see why. Let's look on the code itself. See the top line, if, and then some blah 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 blah. And below it, there is some other code in the brackets. Basically, this means both mods are saying the next. If there is a certain condition, the top line starting with if word, do the next, the other code below in brackets. If you will just choose uh, both changes in each conflict, it will be done in a really weird way, mixing both of mods code lines, so no wonder it got broken, right? Now how to solve this and any other complex conflict. Two simple rules. First one follow the common sense, and second one, every bracket must have a pair. Let's apply them now. Following the common sense, why should we randomly mix code parts, right? Logically, they should just go one after another. Now, every bracket must have a pair one. See the resulted lines. For the first mod, both opening and closing bracket are present, but for the second one, one bracket just got lost. And that's why we have a crash after a scripts compilation. 
So what we need to do now? First of all, choose the same mod, mod B for example, for both conflicts. This will paste only these mod code lines and it already looks better, right? Because we see this mod code in whole. Now the last step. In the lower window, where our result is, just press enter after the mod B code, starting a new line. Go to mod C window and just select and copy its own part of conflicting code. Also don't mind these little arrows, these are just a cosmetic separators, they do not actually exist in code itself. Now click on our new line made in a merging window and paste it there. Now if we compare the windows, we can see what we needed from the start. The new stuff from both mods going one after another in proper order. Save and close the script merger. Now let's check it and launch the game. It's now compiling scripts again and some time to think at… Bingo! It is worked and game is launched. But to be 100% sure, let's test it in game of course. Here is our new improved Brenna sword, modified by the mod. Its special effect should greatly increase adrenaline generation when at low health. Let's see. So here is our regular adrenaline generation from hits, right? And now Neckers will have some fun beating poor Geralt. Health is definitely low enough and… yep, our adrenaline generation just spiked. As you can see, you do not need to literally understand the code to merge it properly. Just do not rush and pay a bit of attention to line structure, and you will be able to merge anything and build the most spectacular mod list without issues. A small last note. This part of tutorial is mean for merging exactly the .vs and .xml files. In some cases, really rare ones, you most likely will not encounter that at all, but still worth to mention. There can be conflicts in some other file types, like .csv for example. In this case, it is better to see if the mod has a patch, as the code lines in these files look like a complete gibberish, and you should not do this at random. So if there is no patch, it is better to just avoid using such mods together. Usually that's a lighting weather mod conflicts, and with vastly majority of lighting and weather mods, they are huge and whole game covering, so you should not use more than a single of them anyway. That's it folks, I hope this tutorial was informative and useful for you. Don't hesitate to put it on pause or rewatch some parts of it, and best of luck with modding this amazing game. Don't forget to enable channel notifications and join our Discord to always stay in touch and receive a live modding support. Stay tuned, stay healthy and stay happy. Scimitar Gaming here, signing out.